Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and can I welcome everyone to the Local Outbreak Engagement Board? Um, my name is Matthew Hicks. Uh, I'm the uh, leader of Suffolk County Council, and I'll be chairing this meeting today. This meeting is being broadcast live and is available to watch on the Council's website while we are in public session. The meeting is also being recorded, and the recording will be available for viewing following this meeting. Um, so, uh, I think first of all, we'll just go straight to agenda item num, welcome, introductions, apologies for absence, etc. So, we have apologies received from Ed Garrett, uh, apologies from Melanie Craig, and apologies from Chris Starkey. And we have Catherine Ellis representing Melanie Craig and Maddie Baker Woods representing Ed Garrett. Is there anyone else I've omitted to mention? Uh, that anyone is aware of? No? Okay. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, agenda item two is the public questions, and we have not received any public questions. Um, and then uh, the next item is minutes of the last meeting. Um, if any member wishes to comment on the minutes that have raised in the any items on the previous minutes, can I ask you just to put up your hands now and raise your hands so we can just address those? But if I see no hands go up, I'll take it that we're content to approve the minutes of the last meeting. OK, I will sign those off as and when uh, we get the opportunity. Um, well, I think it's uh, very relevant that we're meeting today, uh, the day after uh, we were uh, remained in tier two. Uh, we know that uh, we need to all work together uh, and there's a lot of work to do. Um, and in the coming days and months, things will continue to be difficult. So it is really important that we keep following the guidance, keep following the rules, um, and that we remember that hands, face, and space is really the best way uh, for us to prevent the uh, virus spreading further. So uh, Suffolk needs you all to play your part, and I know we're gonna hear a lot today from various members and from uh, Stuart Keeble, the Director of Public Health, and others about what Suffolk is doing and all the effort and work that's going in and the commitment that we're all showing to do everything we can. So uh, without, uh, any further wait, I'd like to go straight to Stuart Keeble, who's going to give us a situational update on where we're at in Suffolk following the announcement of Tier 2 yesterday. Thank you, Stuart. Um, thank you, Matthew. Um, just wait one moment while I share my slides and, and I'll talk you through where I kind of feel we are, uh, both from a sense of what happened yesterday, but more broadly with the uh, spread of the virus at the moment. Um, OK. So yeah, clearly uh, an important day yesterday. Um, um, obviously, we've ended up um, in uh, uh, continuing in tier two, and and I think for me, uh, really, I want to just take us through uh, where we are at the moment and the direction of travel. Um, and every time I look at this data, uh, every day, or actually it actually updates sometimes on on a few a few hourly basis, we are seeing a progression in a fast moving situation where the virus spread is progressing quite quickly. Uh, both um, across uh, the southeast and and also starting to be in Suffolk and working its way across the east of England. So, so this is really just to provide um, some context about the point that Matthew made about how seriously we need to take things, and and what we need to um, do together um, as as a, as a county uh, moving forward uh, to halt this. So just to provide some context. Clearly, uh, parts of the southeast, uh, Hertfordshire, all went into uh, tier three earlier part, uh, or parts of it earlier part of last week, uh, this week, and then the rest of Hertfordshire um, yesterday. The, the the pattern is very clear that it's 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 obviously the highest density of cases is in the southeast and in the uh, um, east east London and also um, in the uh, west in the south of Essex, but we can see it working across. Uh, across these parts of, of the region and and you can see that the highest density there is obviously in, in, in the kind of the uh, movie colour uh, but it, it is working its way across in, in, in what we're looking at and the rates across uh, the east of England are, are increasing overall as well and at this point in time obviously they identified a new strain of the virus uh, originally in, in around the Kent southeast area uh, we're still trying to learn more about that, but I know there's a report from um, there was a report from Public Health England that they had they had uh, identified some of these new strains in Ipswich, in Norwich, and in Cambridge, and um, and this and, and naturally this strain they believe is more infectious, but not not more dangerous in that sense. But obviously it can mean to more rapid spread. So we need to understand more of that, and I think all of the actions and hand hand face space 
and and following the guidance around self-isolation still all count it's just we're trying to understand that situation as it evolves so where are we at the moment um Suffolk has now got the highest rate it's had um, since the beginning of the um, pandemic. Now, clearly early on, we didn't test as much, so it's hard to know what, what, um, what the first wave was like. But clearly we are seeing a rapid increase in the number of cases in Suffolk at the moment. Um, that is replicated across both the east of England and the England and England, but the um, the uh, it is a, a rapid uptick. And at the moment, Suffolk is uh, 112 cases per 100,000 in the last seven days. And if you think about it, um, only a few weeks ago that was sitting around the 60s. Um, so we have seen a big shift. Uh, within Suffolk, clearly there is variation and there's been a lot of focus on Ipswich and obviously Ipswich has a higher rate, but actually the rate has stayed relatively stable there over the last week or so. Uh, but what we have seen is a rapid escalation across all areas of Suffolk. So this, this isn't just about one part of the county. We are being seeing big changes uh, across everywhere. And, and with the incomplete data that I see coming through, so the, the, the rates on here are based on, uh, they ignore the last five days because that's incomplete data. I know that the rates in the rest of Suffolk will continue to increase over the next few days with, uh, with places like I think East Suffolk going to be hitting um, over 100 cases per 100,000 in the last seven days in the next few days. So it is uh, a quite a clear direction of travel and for me, a worrying uh, direction of travel. Um, this map shows at the moment the, the rates uh, via uh, small geographical areas. I think two things clearly there are still hotspots and clusters within Ipswich. But what's different to this, if you look at this map about uh, a week, a week and a half ago, there would have been a lot more kind of grey colours across this as there wouldn't have been as many cases. But we are starting to see it across the county. So, again, just to reinforce, this is very much a Suffolk wide issue um, and a high acceleration in rates across the patch. Um, when you look at where and in which communities it's spread, uh, so this is for the whole of Suffolk. Um, we are seeing steeping, more steeper increases in some groups, although there is an uptick in nearly every group apart from the 0 to 10 year olds. Um, so so um, we've been seeing um, big increases, especially amongst the 23 to 39 year olds um, and, 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 and generally across most of those working age groups. But also what we're experiencing is different to what was experienced in, in, in the south of Essex, Hertfordshire and, and south east because that was being driven by the 11 to 18 year olds. And although we've seen a, a, a large a, a large increase, not at the same rate at all. So, so very interesting that it's a slightly different pattern to what we're seeing. But what I would take from this is that this is generalized. This isn't about a specific hotspot. This isn't about a specific age group. All of them are going up apart from the very youngest age groups. Um, okay, this doesn't come out um, properly. So I'm gonna move on from that. So, um, one of the things we have picked up on is testing. The number of people getting testing has rapidly increased since about the 5th of December. And, and, and at the moment, I think our uh, places like CopDoc um, and CopDoc um, Regional Testing Centre and our mobile testing units are more busy than they, they probably have been since they first came online, uh, which is positive. If people have symptoms, they need to get tested. And even if they have generally fairly marginalised symptoms still get tested. I think it's better to make sure we identify every case and people to take actions. But at the same time, the positivity rate is increasing as well. Um, so if it was just because we thought we'd pick up more cases because we were testing more, then the positivity rate would, would probably uh, flatten or drop off. What that's telling me is that there's quite a bit of COVID out there and actually uh, we will keep finding more the more we get tested. So it, it just meets the picture of what's happening more broadly. But what I would say is actually the rate of testing in for pillar two testing in Suffolk is still lower than many other parts of the country. And 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 I know that uh, through the testing that's been going on, the regular testing in care home staff, in hospital staff, we are picking up cases. But I think that's the background cases we are finding in the wider community. And I think we still need to, if we're going to tackle this, is to get as many people tested as possible so we can actually chase down the virus and get people to self-isolate. Um, because that's the only way we're going to stop the transmission. Um, so with regards to different settings, um, I have to say, first of all, the schools, uh, the teachers, the head teachers have done an incredible job um, and have, have earned themselves a well-deserved break and working really hard to respond. 
So near the end of the term, we were seeing increasing numbers of children in high schools uh, testing positive. What I would say is that this is this is picking up background spread in the community. This isn't about transmission in schools because we had very few actual outbreaks. So these were individual children testing positive. Interestingly, in broader workplaces, we're still only picking up on limited small numbers of um, outbreaks, which on the one hand is positive. We don't want to see big outbreaks, but may also be about the need for us to get our testing rates up so we can we can capture people um, early on uh, and reduce the spread of the virus. Uh, we have seen an increase in the number of outbreaks and clusters in NHS settings. Uh, so in the news, you'll be aware around um, Ipswich Hospital, but we've also picked up in GP practices, the hospice and other settings. So clearly that's a challenging time for them, but it just identifies a direction of travel and, and the spread, I think, coming from the community into those settings and back out again. So it's no different to any other of those settings. The virus is circulating. And, and clearly, uh, we have also been increasing, uh, seeing an increasing number of outbreaks and exposures in care homes. So outbreaks are where there's linked cases and exposures are where basically somebody has tested positive but hasn't led to wider spread. And I think, again, what this shows is that there is a lot of the virus around and it, it, it supports that general picture that we are on an upward trajectory at the moment. So the implications around the increasing rates clearly um, is, 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 is around um, the impact on individuals' health and obviously on our health services, which obviously there's a lot of focus at the moment, and also, unfortunately, people losing their lives. And we have seen uh, across our hospitals, um, so Ipswich Hospital, West Suffolk, and also uh, James Paget picking up uh, the Waveney population, we have seen a significant increase um, in cases since around, um, well, there's been a general uptick uh, since the beginning of October, but, a, a, but an acceleration over the last kind of four or five days. Um, so clearly we, what you need to be doing is we need to reduce the transmission. We need to make, make sure that we get the, the levels of virus down in our community. And unfortunately, we are now starting to see an increase in the number of um, deaths. So as people rightly challenge me sometimes and say, well, unfortunately, people do uh, lose their life this time of the year with flu and other illnesses and respiratory disease around. So that's why I don't just look at COVID. I look at the what's called excess deaths above and beyond the five year average. And what you can see on that chart is the um, in the, the April, May time, you can see above that blue line that runs across the excess deaths um, that happened there. So there's about 600 more people died in that period of this year compared to what we would expect over a five year average. But we are also seeing a clear jump um, in the most recent data uh, with about 50 excess deaths there across Suffolk and the, the, the graph show the rest for the rest of Suffolk. So we know that there is a delay as the cases increase. Uh, a couple of weeks later, we tend to see an increase in hospital admissions and then beyond that, uh, a, a week or so later, an increase in deaths and we are seeing that pattern. So this this is a serious situation um, and 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 I think if it carries on in this direction, I, I would I would suspect we will end up in tier three at some point because if it continues at that that kind of rate, it's going to be taking us up to extremely high levels. So 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 really, that's that's kind of the situation where we are at this point in time. Um, as I say, uh, quite a concerning direction of travel, um, but um, we will talk about later on in this the actions we're taking um, to try and resolve this going forward. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you very much, Stuart. Um, right, happy to open it up. Do any colleagues have questions at this point? Yeah, we have, uh, first of all, John Griffiths. Um, Matthew, thank you very much, and thank, thanks, Stuart. Um, I, I just um, just wanted to echo, Matthew, your and Stuart's cautionary comments um, that hard as we're all doing, and I wanted to make my thanks known, and all our thanks to the teamwork, cooperation, efforts, of all the public and private sector organisations, indeed almost everyone in Suffolk, um, which has helped to make things less bad than they could have been. We could have been in tier three, and um, but the situation remains serious. And just because we can do more things in tier two than we could if we'd been placed in tier three and over Christmas doesn't mean we have to or should do. And hopefully we can all continue to rely on the cooperation, the teamwork of all on this call and everybody else involved um, to keep us um, as safe as possible, the infections as low as possible, the tier as low as possible, 
as we move forward. And there's a long way to go still, but I think in Suffolk, we're very lucky at how well everybody's working together. And thank you for that, Matthew. I'm saying that now slightly because I have, unfortunately have to leave the meeting quite shortly, but I just want to echo your comments and Stuart's and say thank you to all of you. Thank you very much, John. Um, David, you're next. David Ellesmere. Thank you, Matthew. Um, it, it was it was a, a salutary um, warning there from Stuart, I think, because when we when the tiers were first announced and we were placed in tier two, I think there was a you know there were some people who believed we should have been in tier one, uh, and I think they given how low we were compared to the rest of the country, I think there was a, a you know an expectation that we would soon be moving down to tier one. What we've just seen from Stuart is that we were actually very lucky not to go into into tier three yesterday. Um, you know, there's been focus on Ipswich, but it's clear that actually cases are increasing right across the county. Uh, and, you know, we, we do need to recognise this fact. So we should not take the fact that we have stayed in tier two as a vindication of what we're doing. It should actually be a wake up call that unless we we do redouble our efforts, follow the guidance, the hands, face, space, make sure we all do that. If we don't, then there is a very good chance that when the tiers are next reviewed at the end of this month, we could end up in tier three. Uh, so I, it's just to just to reiterate that I think you know Stewart's put it across very well in graphic form, just what's happening in Suffolk, uh, and we do you know we do need to pay attention to this because we're if if we carry on the way that we are. We're not going to stay in tier two. We're not going to go down. We're going to be going up to tier three. Thank you, David. Uh, Tim Passmore, you're next. Um, thank you, Matthew. I'm not going to repeat what um, John and David have said, but just to say, I don't think we can emphasise how serious, emphasise enough how serious the situation is. We've got to do everything possible to try and make sure we don't get into tier three. And as Stuart said, there is a likelihood, maybe even a probability. I just wanted to ask Stuart, and this may be something you're going to bring up later, so no need to answer it now if not appropriate. Are there any extra special measures we can take collectively in Suffolk, bearing in mind how well we have worked together over the last, well, since March, to be honest, um, that we could ask people to do? And the other thing to touch on, of course, there is this hope of the vaccine, but it will take some months before the vast majority of the population is uh, vaccinated, I've no idea, but maybe four, five, perhaps even six months. And how will we get that through to people that there is help at hand, but it will not happen immediately, which is even more of a reason to make sure we stick to the regulations and keep us all self and as healthy as possible. Thank you. Stuart. Um, thank you, Tim. Um, on the first point, I think if you're asking us as, as for the people of Suffolk what we could all do together, then my first port of call in time is, is about what we do at Christmas. Um, I think clearly it's a massively important time for many of us in the year and, and we know that the guidance is available. Um, it's clear that we, we have those days, periods where we can meet up with uh, uh, at least two other households uh, to celebrate Christmas. Um, my my view is that, um, as you rightly say, that the vaccine is on the horizon. It's going to take a bit of time to get there, but we will focus on and target the most vulnerable first. That that we we need to for now hold off maybe on those things that we would normally want to do for a bit longer, because actually there's two things. One of them is going to protect our loved ones, and secondly, actually it might help maintain some of our liberties and freedom that we've got at the moment that we wouldn't if we went into tier three. So my first plea would be that if people don't need to, let's have a smaller Christmas this year with your immediate household contacts and family um, and put it off for now. But I appreciate there are some people out there that are on their own and, and it's a difficult time of year. But if people do need and want to come together to really minimise the level of contact that you spend together, because the longer you time you spend together, the more likely you will to spread the virus. Secondly, if you do, make sure you get your windows open and get air circulating through your house. And, and thirdly, really think about wearing masks and, and, and keeping your distance where possible. I, I appreciate you'll probably feel silly doing it, but actually, ultimately, you'll be pre protecting each other. So I think that's my first ask at the moment. 
Um, and then uh, um, because that's what's going to that's what's going to hit us next, I think, if we don't if we don't get this right. And that's going to happen a couple of weeks after Christmas. Um, and the point about the vaccinations, yes, it is going to take us a while to get it out. Um, SAGE, uh, sorry, no, the Joint Committee for Vaccines have done the work that identifies the at-risk groups. And, and if, if for every 20 people over the age of 80 in a care home you immunise, you will save one life. But if you look at everybody over the age of 60, then you have to immunise 2,000 people. So people need to be patient. Um, it will be coming. Um, but while we're waiting for it to come, we need to carry on and protect each other because we've got we've got we've got a few more months of winter to go after this. And we, we all need to really work together to just get through that period. Thank you very much, Stuart and Matthew. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, John Ward. Yeah, um, uh, thanks, Matthew. Um, uh, just one, one uh, initial comment. Uh, I was very pleased to see that the um, uh, problems in Hadley seem to have been resolved. The, the rate there has dropped dramatically from what it was a few weeks ago, which, which is very good. So it does uh, goes to prove that um, with, with the right approach, um, outbreaks, uh, local outbreaks, very local, hyperlocal outbreaks like that can can be turned around quickly. But just to reiterate what other speakers have said, um, the, the fact that we only just um, missed out on tier one a few weeks ago, um, but uh, this time around we're fortunate to avoid tier three is is perfect illustration of the fact that th the increase now is getting very serious and we have got all of our residents have, have got to take it seriously and follow the advice and guidance that Stuart has just um, outlined and um, that way we will all stay safe over Christmas and into the new year. Thank you John. Um, any, any other questions or points anyone wants to bring up at this point. If if none, um, I'd like to now bring in uh, Steve Jupp just to give us a situational update from the police. Steve, over to you. Thank you, Matthew. Um, as you know, we continue to uh, enforce where appropriate. This week, uh, we've been out working with colleagues in a day of um, education and advice in uh, Ipswich Town Centre, which went really well. Uh, we've been particularly focusing on a number of hotspot areas and working with licensed premises to ensure that um, they are keeping um, their customers safe and they're adhering to the guidelines. We have a, a full uh, commitment um, and operational plans in place for over the Christmas period and the new year, which we shouldn't forget as well. Um, and um, where people are breaching, uh, we are we are enforcing, but we continue to using the four E's as well. Um, happy to take any questions. Thank you. Uh, any questions for Steve at this point? No. OK, thank you, Stephen, for that. OK, we'll now move on to the um, to uh, the outbreak management fund update. Uh, Stuart, um, over to you. Thank you, Matthew. Um, I'm just going to um, share a couple of slides just for those that might be watching um, online, because I appreciate with the current timing, we did manage to get all the papers out. Um, so um, I will just share again. So I think we've I've, I've focused a lot on the current situation. Um, and and I think what I would also want to reiterate is that we, we can turn this around. Liverpool is an example of an area which actually had rates up in the 400s and they're now down to 90 something. So actually, and they're in tier two now. So it's something very much that we can take control of and, and really uh, put ourselves in the, the best position. And as part of that, we've received money as part of the previous lockdown to help try and contain uh, and prevent uh, uh, um, COVID uh, spread within Suffolk and we've, we've, we're agreeing a funding programs at the moment around this and really this segment is just to make the board aware and ask, ask for their ratification really of of some of the items that we've put in place and I've broken them down into prevention and and response and um, because I think it's important that we need to focus as much on prevention still as response so recognizing the great work that our businesses have been doing working through the pandemic in really challenging positions um, we've, 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 we've agreed to put some funding in working with our local authority partners and also uh, the, the um, Norfolk and Anglia Local Economic Partnership, the LEP, um, to put some resources in to do some peer working and support for businesses um, in, in Suffolk around, around um, preventing the spread of COVID 
uh, but also for them showing the good work they're already doing to each other to share that good practice. So there's a number of programmes of work identified there uh, which focus on engagement, on peer-to-peer -peer, uh, support and then wider uh, um, more broadly. So um, and there'll be another one in the response bit about support to businesses if they have an outbreak. But that but that's a really important setting because when we do get big outbreaks in those settings, if we can prevent them from getting larger, then we can we can really try and stop things in their in their path. Uh, the third item is around a wider workforce training. So clearly I have a public health team, but that's only one small part of the public sector. Um, and we work closely with our district and borough colleagues. But one of the things that's been pushed back actually is that we need more and more eyes and ears and voices in the community. So um, we're going to improve and increase the level of support we can give to people to understand what they, the advice they might need to give and, and be able to respond to questions when they're out and about doing their, their kind of frontline roles. So there's something here about developing some packages of simple packages of training and information which we can disseminate out to our wider partners. And, and, and even things like the vaccination, making sure people are confident to talk about it if anybody ever asks them about it. But also recognising that we employ tens of thousands of people in Suffolk and we all live in our communities here. So if we're all better understanding about this, they can also add to an advocate in their community. So the fourth item on here um, relates to, um, so, so Steve was talking about that day of information in Ipswich. We, we've had a community intervention team running now for about eight months, going out into the communities, uh, talking to people. I think they've probably talked to about two or 3,000 people so far. And basically trying to find out what's happening in the communities, uh, trying to establish people's understanding, identifying challenges or issues, and feeding that back into the wider system so we can take action, whether that's uh, asking the environmental health teams to come in or actually asking us to do different information campaigns to support people's understanding. So very much additional resource to strengthen that resolve and that resource working flexibly across uh, the county and with our district and borough partners. Um, and then the final item around prevention is around a fund for our uh, voluntary sector to be able to, to, to be able to bid into. And this is really about recognising that I can stand here and talk today, but maybe not everybody's going to relate to me. Um, and, and actually, we need to make sure that what we say and what we put across actually is relevant to different community groups. So, so what we're going to be doing is, and we're already starting to work with um, voluntary sector organisations to actually work with the, their communities um, um, on our behalf and identify the issues and challenges around responding to COVID, the key messages, and also identify maybe misinformation and, and, and other things that are circulating so we can work through them and with them to try and support their communities. So all of those are prevention focused uh, programmes of work and many of them are already um, will be getting ready to kick off um, um, very, very soon. The next part is the response part uh, to COVID. And, and, and talking about how do we respond more broadly in Suffolk, we've obviously talked about the key messages that we're giving to individuals, but we need to make it as easy as possible for people to self-isolate and take the right actions if they happen to have symptoms. So the first thing we want people to do is obviously to get tested if they have symptoms. Now, there may be some people that actually lives mean that they're going to really struggle if they have to isolate for that period of time. And, and what, what we realise is actually all of our lives are complex. And it might be that not everybody's got a support mechanisms around them. So it might be that they have a dog that they need to walk. It might be that they have to have some responsibilities of looking after a, a, an elderly relative. And so what we're going to do is extending the home but not alone service that was set up for clinically extremely vulnerable people who were shielding. But actually, we're going to turn that into a self-isolation support service. So when people um, test positive, uh, we'll do the contact tracing with them or the national system will, and then we'll, then we'll follow them up and ask and find out if they need any support or help to deal with their self-isolation period. And we feel by doing that, it will help, help more people be able to self-isolate in the way that we need them to, to reduce the spread. A link to that also is, is understanding that some people may be isolated on their own or they may be struggling. It may be that the, they have, uh, they have um, poor well-being or mental health and that they, they will need some support through this period because it's not easy being in your house for 10 days in a row. And so as part of that also, we're looking at funding uh, what's called some isolation buddies that actually could do some more intense work with those individuals. But actually, after after the um, after they've self isolated, looking at whether that we can bring those people into the wider community and link them up with other community groups. So looking at recovery as well as just COVID response. The fourth point on here is is more broadly um, around um, funding to support those people who are asked to self isolate. 
we appreciate that some people will be on statutory sick pay or, or limited funds and actually taking uh, 10 days out of work is going to be really difficult. So what we're going to do is that we're going to top up uh, the national fund and actually have a far more flexible threshold for people who are in financial difficulty when they've been asked to self-isolate. We'll link that through from our contact tracing on the home but not alone but uh, when this rolls out and hopefully that'll happen in the next few weeks then we will be able to deal with individual issues and try and provide the support so it enables people to actually stay at home, do their isolation time and actually again reduce the spread of the virus. So I think that's everything, Matthew, but I think these are really positive steps forward that will help us be more effective in trying to reduce the spread of the virus and actually support the people of Suffolk to do what we need them to do, to do the isolation, but also to prevent the spread. Um, and I see these as really a positive step forward. Thank you. Stuart, can you just clarify what you need from us? Because you talked about at the beginning um, what, uh, what you would like from the, so, from, so, um, yeah, so the, the ask engagement board. Sorry, Matthew. Yeah, so the ask from the board really is is for their um, uh, for their endorsement of the direction of travel, the things we're doing, and also for us to bring future things back for 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 citing and endorsement going forward. Thank you very much. Okay, happy to open it up to colleagues of the board to comment uh, regarding the endorsement. Yeah. Uh, first off, uh, Maddie Bakerwoods. Thank you very much. So first of all, I just want to totally endorse all of the messages which Stuart has given um, from a health service perspective. And uh, thank you for that. And uh, particularly the emphasis on the strong partnerships. And I think the programme that Stuart set out is about supporting our strong communities, um, underpinning, enabling uh, and supporting them through this difficult time, both in terms of prevention and in terms of management. Uh, as individuals and as uh, businesses. So it has my absolute full support. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, Susie Morley. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Um, I, Stuart, I can't endorse you enough, to be quite honest. It's, it's lovely to see the focus being put on the um, mental and emotional support and well-being around our resi uh, residents that um, strikes a real chord with me and with Mid Suffolk and I'm really pleased to be able to support you on this. Thank you Susie. Anyone else wish to come in? So I take it the board is happy to endorse and support uh, as we've seen in the paper and the uh, spending that's being suggested uh, and that we're happy to endorse that um, unless I hear from anyone otherwise. Uh, very much so, M uh, Matthew. Thank you, John. OK, great. Thank you, everyone. Uh, so we'll move on now to the uh, testing strategy, including an update on the lateral flow devices. Um, I know, Stuart, you're going to give us an update. And I promise I think that's the last thing for me then, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> so. So this is an update. At some point, I want to bring a strategy back, but um, things on testing are moving very quickly at the moment at uh, a national, regional and local level. Um, but I wanted to just give you a, a feeling of where we are at the moment, because I know at the last um, board, there was obviously discussions about the, um, I think it was about the, 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 the 78,000 lateral flow test devices that we would be able to in the future be able to access uh, on a regular basis. So, so clearly testing is a really important part of our strategy around, around managing um, COVID. I think what I need to re-emphasize though is that it is one part of it and we must make sure that we don't get overly focused because quite rightly we need to test, we need to isolate, we need to support people um, to do those things but it's, it's an important part of that mix. So since the last um, board um, we opened the new local testing site near Portman Road um, in Ipswich and that's a walk-up site it's flexible um, if, if people can attend uh, necessarily without an appointment if they need to. Um, and I would ask people to make use of that. Again, I reiterate the point that if you have any form of symptoms, please go and get tested um, so we can try and reduce the onward spread. Um, so there's obviously been a lot of discussion in the news about these new lateral flow testing devices. So these uh, effectively what they look like pregnancy kits. Um, and, and clearly every area in the country has an opportunity to make use of those. So there's a number of different national programmes going on at the moment. I just want to flag up to say how we're involved and how that might evolve. So um, uh, the Department of Health and Social Care have brought forward the testing 
in the care homes um, to enable visiting. We're, we're working with care homes and it'll be down to each care home to make a decision about whether and how they might want to use these devices. Um, the other area where we've heard about recently is obviously around education setting and schools. Uh, with the idea in the longer term of how you regularly test children and also potentially look at uh, um, test to enable, which is if somebody's a close contact, that over a period of time they might be tested each day um, so, so they don't have to self-isolate. So what I would say is that these, these, this technology and these things are at very early days. And what we will do is we will work with our, um, with our school partners um, to support them around this. But there is a huge amount of work that will need to take place to make these things work. And, and we mustn't underestimate that, that amount of work that that will take. And also we need to make sure that we use these devices against high risk areas. So in areas where there isn't a high level of COVID, there, there are also disbenefits from using them as well. So really what our strategy about in Suffolk will be about is really focusing on high risk settings and high risk places. Um, so um, as part of coming back into the new university year, we will be working with the University of Suffolk to help them test each of their students twice using the lateral flow devices over the first four to eight weeks of term. And obviously a university is a high risk setting because of the students living in a close proximity in the accommodation. We're also looking at um, other parts in, in Suffolk and areas which have higher incidence of COVID, but maybe lower air, lower uptake of testing, because we recognise that actually you need a local flexible resource. So we will also be looking at how we can develop a local testing resources to support those um, areas. The final area we'll be looking at is um, high risk businesses. So we know that two businesses in Suffolk have already signed up to the national pilot uh, for using lateral flow devices. Now, you will all be aware that we were dealing with some large outbreaks in, food, in, meat, in meat and poultry processing plants earlier on in September. So uh, the aim is to start working with those businesses to see how we can enable them to use these devices to actively test their staff. And then as the technology evolves, look at how they can use that to reduce the issue, the, the risk on business continuity. So what I would like to do is um, at the next LOEB after Christmas, I would like to bring back the full strategy for, 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 the, um, for the LOEB to sign off on. Um, but at this point, to just to, to um, let the board know that we are working on this, we're responding to the new technology and the ask um, of the government, but we want to make sure we get this right because uh, Liverpool did an incredible job, but they had the army in place to support them to do that. So we need to make sure that whatever we do is sustainable, but also targets the areas of highest need. So I think that's everything on that, Matthew. So that was more than just an update, more than anything else, rather than an ask of the board. Yeah, thanks very much for that. Um, any questions on the uh, on the lateral flow devices? Yes, David. Yes, thanks, Matthew. I, clearly, if we you know, get these in place, that it, it will be uh, a useful tool to, to help us cut down um, infections if we manage to track more people who are infected down, and in particular, if we can get them to isolate. Uh, I just wanted to ask, Stuart, clearly, if we do, it, it's, it relates to the point you were making before, if we're making more of these tests available, we are likely to identify more people who are infected and I just wondered you know how we would communicate that uh, because um, you know it may in the in the short term appear that infections are are going up significantly uh, and you know how we communicate uh, looking at the positivity rate rather than necessarily the number of the, the the raw number of infections how we actually communicate that so we're not worrying people as well. Thank you, David. I think really good, a really good point and question. So uh, for one, we will have uh, the data reporting on this as a different type of test. Um, so that, 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 that means that we can separate out the data and understand what we're picking up from an asymptomatic perspective. And part of the strength of these tools actually is just to measure what's happening in the background in your population. As I said before, I think the regular testing of healthcare staff acted as a barometer and it was actually a very good predictor of what's now happening in the wider Suffolk system. So by using these as a barometer, we can pick that up. Um, I think uh, these devices are being used uh, across the country and will be used more. Although again, uh, different areas will take different approaches. Areas with very high rates may do similar approach to Liverpool. Um, so, so I think we need to find the virus and we need to communicate the fact that we're finding it. Um, so, so I think it's just making sure that we don't 
don't bunch it all together and we can communicate to people clearly that actually we're finding it but actually what's really important as well as you said is is that we've, we've got the support in place to encourage people to get tested it's a fine balance but ultimately we need to find the virus and we need to find the cases to stop the further onward spread and we know that a vast majority of people have it asymptomatically and that's why it's in that sense it's so dangerous to us thanks Ian. thanks uh anyone else wish to come in Nope. OK, uh, thank you for that. Um, thanks, Stuart. Um, next, we're going to move on to the local outbreak control plan update. Uh, welcome to Richard Cracknell and over to you, Richard. Thank you, Matthew, and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, the paper circulated just forms part of the regular update given to this board on the implementation of Suffolk's local outbreak control plan. And I'll just go through and pull out some elements that I'd like to share with you. Uh, the board have already heard today about how we're using some of the monies received from the Department of Health and Social Care, investing in the uh, projects and programmes that will prevent community transmission and support those affected by COVID. And the programme office that forms part of the local response and uh, and the implementation of our local outbreak control plan is supporting uh, this work by building mechanisms to capture the outcomes so that we can evaluate the effectiveness and identify any further areas for future investments. Uh, our local uh, public health specialist team continues to support and manage local outbreaks that occur outside of adult care settings and children and young people and educational settings as these are managed by their respective teams um, with public health consultant support. So our public health specialist team also regular updates on the national guidance and policy changes, ensuring our response and uh, our partners in Suffolk remain cited on the changes. Uh, currently, the team are managing 48 local situational outbreaks in complex settings and supporting five health uh, setting outbreaks. The CYP team uh, managing outbreaks and uh, providing support to educational learning settings as well as children in care and to date they have dealt with 617 cases in 164 different educational learning settings with a further 48 uh, cases in 32 early years and, ch and child care settings so we can see that, uh, that these teams are, are very busy and doing a great job. Uh, the adult and community services team are managing outbreaks in the adult care settings. They arrange whole home testing when an outbreak is declared and they're providing ongoing support to those providers. And they've recently supported the first cohort of 260 care home staff to access vaccinations uh, this week. The testing work stream continues to support the network of local testing sites. Uh, during the first week in December, there were 5,724 tests conducted, which is a 6% increase on the last seven days. But as we've already heard today, we know our testing capacity is being used uh, more and more over recent weeks. Uh, the team are expanding our offer of our local priority testing service, offering uh, testing site locations in both the east and the west of the county, which will be in addition to the site located in Copdock, Ipswich and this will enable easier access for those living outside of the town and strengthen our, res our response to outbreaks and complex situations which may require further testing. The local contact tracing service, which follows up on cases that have not been successfully contacted via the NHS Test and Trace Service, dealt with 403 cases and 689 cases in November. Uh, and they've had an extremely successful time making contact with positive cases and providing isolation advice with a 93% success rate, uh, which is uh, extraordinary. Uh, the teams are developing their approach to reverse contact tracing, and this approach is used to chase down the virus to seek greater insights and uncover um, previously unlinked cases to enrich the epidemiological picture. Uh, of the case rates and patterns in Suffolk, which means that we can be better prepared and better planned in our responses. The knowledge and intelligence team continue to present all publicly available information in one easily accessible place, and that's the Corona Watch product, which is available through the Healthy Suffolk website. Uh, and the team are providing exceptional analysis and interpretation of the epidemiological data and intelligence from local and national sources to ensure our local response to COVID is based on the latest information. Uh, and now there is an established process for that in-depth analysis to support individual outbreak management situations. 
The community intervention team are working in partnership with uh, local agencies and groups to engage with members of the public of all ages. Uh, and the team have been outside schools, in town centres, outside shopping centres, in parks and open spaces, and attended areas based on concerns received from members of the public. Uh, they are seeking to ensure the current guidance is understood and gather feedback, which is used to inform our local response. Uh, and they've developed a suite of materials that are available in, in translated languages. Local authorities across the county are providing support and accommodation for those known to be rough sleeping and vulnerable groups. And then I think my final part of the update is around the Safer Places group, which continues to support contact tracing and workplace premises risk assessments and safety arrangements and evaluation of uh, event safety. So police and local authority teams are monitoring compliance. Most intervention has been through engagement to support compliance, although some formal action has been needed to be taken where non-compliance uh, in respect to the COVID regulations has been observed. Recently, the team have worked with supermarkets to review their COVID arrangements. Ipswich Town Football Club has 2,000 fans returned to home matches and taxi providers to develop local guidance on recording contacts that their drivers have to enable effective contact tracing. And the team are we meeting weekly to consider new cases and new areas that may require action and support. Thank you, Matthew. That uh, ends the quick review of the of, of the paper that was circulated. Thank you. Thanks, Richard. Uh, and I think, I mean, uh, clearly, as you said, 93.32% successful contact rate on our own uh, contact and trace team is, you know, that's a phenomenal success. Um, and I see that you're moving uh, some of that work then in terms of responsibility of keeping in touch with the individuals and self-isolation over to the home but not alone uh, sure. service, which again is uh, excellent because it's using something that's already existing, something that's already working, something that's proven in terms of a contact point uh, and freeing up your team for more uh, contact and trace as we go forward. Is the team operating at full capacity now? Uh, I mean, I, is it overloaded with the numbers increasing and does the, do the four extra, you've got four additional team leaders joining from the 14th of December. Do you think you'll need more than that in time or does that feel about right? At the moment with the move um, to those keeping in touch calls, to those follow-up calls to make sure that we are continuing to provide support to those that need it to the home but not alone service, that move will free up capacity for our, our contact and trace team to follow on and continue with their core activity. So at the moment, there is no further recruitment um, needed, but it will be reviewed, obviously, as um, as we move forward. Thank you, Richard. Any other questions from uh, from Richard's report? Um, which obviously, we've got a copy of as well. Anything else? Yes, John. Yes, um, I'm just trying to turn my camera off. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, uh, uh, like Matthew, I mean, that, that contact um, trace rate, um, a success rate, is is exceptional and and uh, shows that we, we must have an exemplar service here. Um, are, are there things that we're doing that um, perhaps other other areas with with um, less successful rates are not doing? Are, are, are there lessons that we can provide for for others? Thanks, uh, thanks, John. Yes, absolutely. We are um, linking in with other areas to share best practice and our teams do join regular um, learning activities that are coordinated uh, regionally and nationally to share best practice. Uh, and you're right, I think um, we definitely have things that we can share with other areas and we'll continue to do so. Yeah. Thank you. Stuart, you want to come in? Yeah, and just to build on that, I think from the beginning when we developed this model we recognized that it wasn't just a standalone function so so some areas i think just just uh, responded in what they need to do was just get a load of call handlers in the skill sets we've brought in and probably more seniority we've brought in means we've got people that are used to working with people and are able to have difficult conversations in a very friendly way but to get the information we need um, to do that so they are very much embedded in the whole of the outbreak response linking into outbreaks more generally so we have an IMT and incident management team they're part of that so they understand the context far better and I think that's what's led to us having such a successful uh, approach is that it's not just a standalone thing it's part of an integrated approach and as Matthew said bringing things like home but not alone is only going to strengthen that more broadly going forward. Thanks Stuart. Thanks, Stuart. Anyone else wish to come in on that item? No? OK, thank you. Thanks very much, Richard. Um, next item on the agenda is to go to a 
uh, comms update. Uh, Andrew St. Ledger, welcome. And over to you, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Um, just four things really I wanted to uh, share with members of the board um, this afternoon. Um, firstly, Andrew, can um, I just say your camera's not on sooner? There you go. Yeah, that, that was by choice because it's quite dark in here, it would appear, but never mind. <laughs> um, so the four things I wanted to share with, um, with members of the board um, this afternoon. Firstly, uh, is the um, the outcome of the uh, tiering announcement yesterday. Um, I'm pleased to report to the board that um, the media in Suffolk um, gave this um, good and very prominent coverage and very balanced and fair um, um, coverage and in particular recognising the fact that uh, rates are increasing across the entire county. It's not anywhere in particular. Um, so this is a, um, an issue for all of us. Um, I'm very pleased um, pleased to report that. Um, secondly, we are um, in the midst of our pre-Christmas campaign that's continuing, um, where we're trying to help people just understand some of the kind of the nuances um, in the um, the arrangements um, over the Christmas period. Um, one of the things that we have done today is to publish an open letter to residents from uh, health leaders signed by a number of health leaders um, that has been um, shared with media that uh, the, the local media that's uh, on social media and online and we're going to be actually advertising that over the Christmas period up until the 27th of December across uh, across all postcodes um, throughout Suffolk so that's going to be promoted um, very heavily uh, the third thing I want to do um, let you know was that we have launched also launched today uh, a new film uh, on YouTube um, which very much promotes those um, hands face space and other messages and that's going to also be promoted over the Christmas period and into the new year quite heavily so uh, so look out for that um, and um, the fourth thing is um, just just to just to remind you that we are continuing work on our COVID campaigns throughout Christmas and into uh, 2021. Um, we have um, we have a, a, a new focus now that Suffolk's rates are rising, um, which uh, members will be fully aware of, and we will continue to promote that heavily um, throughout. That's it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Um, any questions at all on that? No. Nope. Anything anyone wants to add? Um, thank you. I've seen the letter obviously has gone out and it's been well circulated. And if everyone could, um, I think, share it as much as possible. Um, it is a it is a, a a letter that I think when you read, you know, is is quite a stark warning to us all and a reminder of what we need to do going forward. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Anything else on comms that anyone would like to bring up at this point? Nope. Okay. Well, there is nothing else on the agenda unless anyone has anything they particularly want to bring up at the end of the meeting. Uh, and it just leaves me really to wish everyone a very merry Christmas. Um, I really want to thank all the uh, officers and all the team and all my colleagues, council colleagues, for. Uh, uh, and fellow leaders for all the hard work that's really gone in over the last few months. Uh, it's been phenomenal the way everyone's pulled together. Uh, we've done, you know, really everyone has done everything they possibly can to look after our residents. Um, Christmas is going to be very difficult. We know that. Uh, the message is clear. Uh, we really need to be careful about what we do and to follow the guidance, particularly over the Christmas period. And Stuart, I think, summed it up. Uh, perfectly as the director of public health of the, what we need to do going forward so i hope everyone has a good christmas hope everyone has a safe christmas um, and see you all in the new year if not before thanks everyone thanks matthew merry christmas and to you thanks josephine